Hi, vlogalog. How are you doing? I'm kind of okay. Today's been crazy, and my internet's gonna go away soon, so I'm gonna try to make this a quick video. Um, to cover kind of the couple other bases that have been talked about, I um I drink occasionally, mostly of my own. Uh, I, I have to I pay for most of mine, um, but it's only like a single drink with dinner because I like the taste. Um, because I like trying out different things just to kind of see what I like and enjoy about alcohol, but that's still rare because, as pointed out before, alcohol is pretty expensive, um, especially when you go out and buy a cocktail with dinner versus um, the price of a six-pack um, and bringing that home with you, which I've done a couple of times, but that's mostly with like hard cider stuff that I'm experimenting with and seeing if I like the flavor of that one versus another one I've tried. Um, as far as caffeine, I'm not really super reliant, though I'm slightly reliant right now because um, I need it to help me get through a class. Because for some reason, um, a couple of for the first couple of weeks, I always hit a lull whenever I had to go into that class, and because it's so small, it's kind of easy for my teacher to notice that I'm like struggling not to nod off. Um, thankfully did not address that in front of the class um so i've been bringing caffeine with me uh caffeinated sodas with me to recently but um if i don't drink caffeine in a day i don't get a headache um over a couple of days i, I won't get a headache i'm perfectly fine i could completely switch out the um the caffeine i drink now with um or the caffeinated sodas I drink now with non-caffeinated sodas and be perfectly fine. I actually did that um, partially through the summer except for at work where I'd have um, a cup of like uh, Dr. Pepper or something um, with one of the f one of my breaks because uh, sometimes you need that as a that little caffeine boost to get you through the lull at work when you work in a theme park and you have a very long shift and you are you ha um, you're assigned to a ride that has people that don't show up very often, so you're just kind of sitting there by yourself, and you need to keep yourself entertained without falling asleep, because uh, falling asleep would be bad. Um, but uh, otherwise, um, yeah. So the the one thing I want to bring up is um, or sort of slightly bring up is uh, vaccinations, and not vaccinations in the sense of the ones that are getting talked about now um, with anti-vaxxers in that argument, but just uh, but flu vaccinations that come out every year. Because it's really interesting, um, the argument, I guess, for and against those, or like just the way people treat them. Um, like, I don't, I haven't ever gotten a flu vaccine as far as I'm aware, at least from the time I was like eight. Up until now, I know I haven't gotten a flu vaccine because I just don't go out and get them when they come out with them. Partially because um, there is some argument about whether or not they're actually helpful because they are made for a strain before, um, made for a predicted strain that may or may not be the strain that comes out or that your system gets hit with, um, but should at least hopefully help have already antibodies in your system that would fight it off before you would actually get. The flu, but I haven't actually gotten the flu except for one point in my life, at which point it was either the flu and or bronchitis. So um, that was a fun experience for me. Um, but it's interesting looking at optional vaccinations and um, whether or not people take them because there are certain op um, like the flu is one of them. And I know um, one of the things about the flu vaccine is it's definitely recommended for people who are around um, infants and or who are parents of infants who um who are around infants often and uh like the elderly because it helps um boost their system so that they don't um contract it because the problem with it could be that it um and it, it kind of talks about the herd immunity thing where it's if um it could pass on to someone else who could it could be worse for their system than someone like me where um or alex and corolla and i think kevin's still technically part of the group i don't remember what the age limit for the whole healthy individuals that don't need it type thing is um is that uh you know it's it's not aimed for like the 20 something year olds who can fight off the flu it's aimed for the people who if it hits their system they could end up um in the hospital and then catch something worse or could catch, develop something worse because the flu gets them um kind of like the shingles vaccine but that's um, that's for when you're much older and definitely aimed at people who have not had or have had um, both to people who, regardless of whether or not you have had the chicken pox because if you get 
because when you get older, if you get it, it's a lot worse. Um, and it's a form, like, the shingles is a form of chicken pox, and it can do a lot of gnarly things to your system. Um, so uh, I think it's really interesting, though, that we have these optional vaccines and whether or not you take them, because I know I don't, I don't know about anyone else in Vlogalog because no one else mentioned it, but uh, yeah, so I don't, and I don't, I see, I see it as a good thing, as something that we have, but I don't know necessarily how effective it is, and I think it's maybe because I'm thinking about that one, uh, at least one study I've heard of that was based on a couple of other studies, I think, about how effective necessarily the flu shot is, because uh, it's developed for the strand that they predict, um, for the strand as they predict it might be that year but it may not be that strain or you might be hit with a different strain or by the time or that the fact that by the time the strain actually tends to hit people it's already been um it's already adapted and is it a different strain than necessarily what was developed for the flu shots that year which i think going to the science of trying to predict the exact kind of flu strain is uh really interesting but um but yeah so that's that's what i wanted to bring up and hopefully you guys will see this before it gets too late because um, my internet is going to be interesting for the next little bit. So until next time, vlog vlog. See ya.